Hi, I'm Emil Witting, the creator of Vortex, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use it to make this animation. There's a download link in the description for this blend file if you want to follow along. Or if you haven't got Vortex yet, you can check it out, it's currently at 25% off during the spring sale on Blender Market. I will go over setting up the simulation first, then how to set up the shaders using Vortex, and finally rendering everything. I will add timestamps so you can skip ahead to any of those if you'd like. For this simulation we need three objects, the fluid domain, the fluid source, and the collision object, the stir bar in this case. The walls don't actually interact with the fluid, they are just added afterwards for the visuals. To make animation easier, I've set the origin of the stir bar to be the same as the origin of the world, so now if we rotate it, it's going to rotate about the center of the box. There are definitely better ways to do this, but this is just quick and easy. If you move to the first frame of the animation, you can press I to make a new keyframe for location and rotation. Move to the end of the animation, press R to rotate around the Z axis, that in 360 degrees. Press I again. And now, if we play the animation, it moves around exactly once during the entire animation. And to set up the fluid, starting with the domain, this is selected going to the physics properties tab and fluid type domain. Make sure it's set to liquid and not gas. I'm just going to leave the resolution at 32. In the cache settings, make sure that the frame start and frame end match the animation. I'm starting at a thousand here, so it's always possible to start the animation earlier if you want to. If you start animations at zero, you can never add something before it. And I'm setting the type to all, which I just find easier to work with when baking. If you bake it like this, you would only get particles. So under the liquid tab, also make sure to enable mesh. The domain is the bounding box where the entire animation fits in. Where the water is actually going to be is determined by the water source. It's fairly easy to add. The fluid type is flow. Also make sure to set it to liquid again. And flow behavior is simply geometry. This will only determine where the liquid is at the very first frame and then the proper simulation will start. For the stir bar, it's fairly similar. Add fluid. Type is now an effector. The settings is already set at collision. Don't have anything else to add. Now back in the domain settings, we can bake the entire simulation in one go because I've set the type to be uh, bake all. And this really only takes a few seconds. I haven't sped up this footage. So now the animation is working with both the particles and the mesh. We can now start adding the shaders with Vortex. If you move to the Shaders tab, you'll notice that the geometry source is still very blocky. And the domain has taken the shape of the water. So the geometry source can be excluded from the viewport and from the render view entirely. You can add the new water material to the domain. Just to remove the default material. Start by adding a point density node, which is under texture. You can now select the domain object. And the particle system called liquid will already be created. I can preview the output using the node wrangler add-on. It's free, I highly suggest you use it. To get the proper values, change the space to world space. And particle age needs to be particle velocity. So that the final result will be more smooth, we can set the interpolation to be cubic instead of linear. And you might have to change the radius to 
make sure that it's not too low. If it's too low, you'll get these black spots. And if it's too large, it will be very slow and way too smooth. In this case, 0.2 usually works. To import the Vortex shaders, use File, Append. Then navigate to the downloaded.blend file you can find on Blender Market. Select it, go to Node Tree. And all you have to do is select Vortex Flow, Foam, and Water. And the rest will automatically be imported to Append. And now we can use the node groups that come with Vortex and shaders. The first one I'm going to add is Vortex Flow. So add new node group, Vortex Flow. Connect the color to the particle velocity, and the density to the particle density. So expand it a bit so I can read all the values. You can see already that there are some waves and ripples. If you want to make the effect stronger, you can increase the flow distance. The larger it is, the more extreme the distortions will be and you will get thinner ripples. I have to animate the time value. To make that a bit easier, I'm going to add a timeline at the bottom of the shader view. Move to the first frame. And you'll see that the shader doesn't look correct now. You don't have to worry about this. This is only in the preview. If you reload, it will be correct again. And in the final render, this will automatically reload each frame. What I'm usually doing is, for the time value, setting it to the frame count, so 1001 in this case. Pressing I while hovering on the value to add the new keyframe. Do the same at the end of the animation. And because the time values are fairly large amounts, the time scale needs to be really small. I found that in this animation it looks the best when it's about 0.05. And the related value, the wave animation speed, you have to try that out for yourself. In this case it looks the best to me, and it's at 2. The default animation starts slow, then speed up, and then slow down again, which is something we don't want for this water. So move to the animation tab. And with the object selected, you see this curve here. Press T, you can set it to be linear. So it's at a constant rate. Now that Vortex Flow is all set up, you can use the output for an actual bump node. So vector bump. Connect the height value. This usually is a little strong, so I'll set the distance to 0.1 instead of 1. That's better. And this normal value can then be used for the vortex water shader. Connect the normal input. And now both the surface and the volume to the material output. Adding foam with Vortex Foam is very similar to using Vortex Flow. So if we add Vortex Foam, you can connect again the color to the particle velocity, density to particle density, and the time value can be animated the same way. The way to connect foam is by making the surface shader passing through it before it goes into the material output. Right now you can't see any foam, which is because the threshold is set too high. It's currently at 0.5. If you set it to 0, then the entire surface is covered at least slightly with foam. So the best value is usually just above 0. Let's try 0.05. That looks a lot better. Part of the foam is determined by the crests of the wave, so the tops. The crest foam, if you set it higher, you'll notice that all the round parts of waves have a lot more foam. While the rest, the acceleration foam, is determined by the simulation. 
to break up the foam texture, there's a few options for noise. I'll increase the strength of the large noise right now and change the scale of the noise, which gives it a much more rough and random look to it. The fine noise is really the fine details and graininess of the foam. And that was everything we needed to do for the shaders. If you want some more information about the values I skipped, like the wave detail roughness, wind, you can see the documentation on Blender Market for that. I'll now quickly go over the process of rendering and exporting the animation. First, let's enable the walls again, just for the viewport. It was already still visible in the renders. Things to note, I've enabled denoising data for using the compositor. And I'm currently rendering at 50% of the final resolution, just so that I don't have to wait as long. I'll quickly render. And in the compositor, you'll see that I have not connected denoising albedo, even though I enabled it through enabling denoising data in the render layer. Because I found that with reflective materials like water, it usually looks better if you leave it out. I'm going to turn down the amount of foam first. So now after that, we're ready to save the results of the render separate files. So we can choose a directory for the output files. Just call it frames for now. Now the final render can be done using render, render animation, or control F12. When the animation is done rendering, we still need to turn the individual rendered frames into one single video file. That can be done in Blender 2, adding a new tab for video editing. Then add image sequence and select all your rendered files. When they're imported, make sure to align them with the start and end of the animation. The animation can now be rendered again the same way, but first change the file format from PNG to FFmpeg video and change the container to the file format you want to use, so for instance MPEG-4. And if you now press Ctrl F12 to render the animation, a new video file will be created in the same folder as the frames. And that's it. I hope this was informative enough. If not, remember that there is more detailed documentation in Blender Market. And thank you for watching.